Amazon Simple Storage Service, or Amazon S3, was first launched back in 2006, being one of the first available AWS services. Today, it stores exabytes of data across many millions of drives and trillions of objects around the world, peaking regularly at millions of requests per second, and has set the standard for object storage across the globe. If you're watching this session, you probably have data stored in S3. This could be financial, life sciences, or media and entertainment data. Perhaps the data is associated with simulations for computational fluid dynamics in the autonomous vehicle, electronic design automation, or oil and gas industries. In any case, over the years, you've accumulated and continue to accumulate a massive amount of data. Well, what are you doing with this data? Have you created workloads to leverage the power of this data using big data analytics, machine learning, or high performance computing? If you have, then you'll want to supercharge these compute workloads by leveraging Amazon FSx for Lustre and S3. Hi, my name is Daryl Osborne, and I'm a principal solutions architect with Amazon FSx. In this reInvent session, supercharge your compute workloads, a deep dive on Amazon FSx for Lustre and S3, I'll share with you why fast file systems matter. And we'll introduce you to Amazon FSx for Lustre's scalable performance. The integration we've built with S3 makes using FSx for Lustre with your S3 data really a no-brainer. We've removed the complexities about moving data back and forth between these platforms. And we've made it so, so easy, it's actually built into this fully managed AWS service. In my introduction, I mentioned a few types of compute workloads being supercharged by leveraging FSx for Lustre and our integration with S3. Customers with these workloads are coming to us year after year with higher and higher demands on how to improve the overall performance of these applications. If I look at the example use cases by industry, we see FSx for Lustre being used for, mo for modeling the, and, and data analytics in the financial services industry genome analysis in life sciences, rendering and transcoding in the media and entertainment industry. In the automotive space, specifically in the autonomous vehicle industry, we see FSx for Lustre being used in electronic control unit or ECU simulations and object detection. Electronic design automation or EDA workloads with semiconductor manufacturers and seismic data processing in the oil and gas industry. So what do these example use cases have in common? Is they typically have a large data set that needs to be processed by applications geared for big data analytics, machine learning, and high performance computing, all of which need high performance storage. So why does high performance storage matter? One of the benefits of cloud computing is the ability to process massive amounts of data in parallel using elastic compute resources. To support these high performance compute clusters, storage needs to, to provide equally scalable performance, thus avoiding any bottlenecks in this design. Without sufficient storage performance, compute resources are left idle, waiting for new data to arrive. High performance storage prevents these system bottlenecks so you can reduce workload runtimes, accelerate business insights, and save compute costs. One of our customers, INEOS Team UK, uses several AWS HPC services, including FSx for Lustre, Elastic Fabric Adapters, and C5N Compute Instances to run thousands of simulations during the design process of their bolt foils. This is a great example of computational fluid dynamics. In this case, the team chose S3 as their primary data store and augmented their storage performance by using FSx for Lustre to provide lower latency file operations. In this case, the ability to run their workloads faster allowed them to iterate on their design more frequently. We've designed FSx for Lustre to provide fast, simple, and cost-effective shared storage to power your high-performance uh, workloads. FSx for Lustre is able to scale up to hundreds of gigabytes per second of throughput and millions of IOPS while maintaining sub-millisecond latencies. It also provides concurrent access from hundreds of thousands of compute instances, uh, compute cores to a single file system. We've also designed FSx for Lustre to be simple to use. 
In just minutes, you can spin up an FSx for Lester file system using the FSx console or API. And because FSx for Lester is a fully managed service, we take care of regular security and maintenance updates. We've also made it easy to access data managed on S3. We also don't believe high performance storage needs to have a high cost. So we provide a range of options so you can choose the price and performance options that meet your business needs. FSx for Lustre is based on open source Lustre, the world's most popular high performance file system. These Lustre file systems are designed so as you add additional storage capacity, you also add additional throughput capacity. This graph illustrates this effect and how our customers provision FSx for Lustre file systems. At the lower end of the scale, you can see a 10 tebabyte file system that includes 2 gigabytes per second of baseline throughput, but can burst to 13 gigabytes per second for short periods of time, and is able to achieve tens of thousands of IOPS while delivering sub-millisecond latencies. At the higher end, you can see a 1,000 tebabyte file system can deliver 200 gigabytes per second of baseline throughput, but can burst up to 1300 gigabytes per second for short periods of time. It's able to achieve millions of IOPS while still delivering sub-millisecond latencies. We recently launched a new feature allowing customers to increase the storage capacity of their existing FSx for Lustre file systems with just a click of a button, allowing them to have the flexibility to grow the file storage as their business needs evolve over time. The storage capacity can be increased in a matter of minutes and because throughput scales linearly with storage capacity, customers get a comparable increase in throughput as they scale up their storage. We provide multiple storage options like solid state disks or SSDs and hard disk drives or HDDs and multiple deployment options like Scratch and Persistent. We offer SSD Scratch file systems. With these file systems, file servers are not replicated or not replaced if they fail and data is not replicated. They are designed for short-term latency-sensitive um, IOPS-focused workloads. Second, we have SSD persistent file systems. With these persistent file systems, data is redundantly stored within the same availability zone and failed disks are automatically and transparently replaced. Also, with persistent file systems, if a file server becomes unavailable, it is automatically replaced within minutes. In the meantime, client requests for data on that server continue to retry until they succeed after the file server has been replaced. They are designed for longer term, latency sensitive IOPS focused workloads. And third, we have HDD persistent file systems. Like SSD persistent file systems, data is redundantly stored within the same availability zone and failed disks are automatically and transparently replaced. But in this case, disks storing the data are on HDDs. SSDs are used to handle metadata file operations, which represent the majority of file system operations. These HDD persistent file systems can also be configured with an optional SSD read-only cache to improve performance for frequently accessed data. They are designed for longer term throughput focused workloads. File systems with storage with different storage and deployment options also come with different baseline throughput rates. Baseline throughput starts at 12 megabytes per second per tebabyte of storage capacity for the HDD persistent file systems and go up to 200 megabytes per second per tebabyte for the SSD persistent and scratch file systems. Prices start at 2.5 cents per gigabyte month on the low end, which provides an HDD persistent file system capable of delivering 12 megabytes per second per tebabyte of storage and up to 29 cents per gigabyte month on the high end for an SSD persistent 200 megabytes per second per tebabyte file system. SSD scratch file systems are also able to deliver 200 megabytes per second per tebabyte of storage capacity, but as a trade-off of not replicating the data or replacing the file servers, we can offer these file systems at more than 50% off an equally performing SSD persistent file system. These SSD scratch file systems are very popular with our customers who use S3 linked file systems, where S3 represents their permanent data store and FSx for Lustre is used as a high performing POSIX compliant file system cache in front of that S3 data. Each of these price points provide a high performance FSx for Lustre file system 
capable of building up high levels of aggregate throughput. With SSD file price in terms of throughput, like the price per megabyte per second. With SSD persistent 50 megabytes per second per terabyte of storage capacity, we start at $2.87 per month per megabyte per second. And we drop down as low as 72 cents per month per megabyte per second for this SSD scratch 200 megabytes per second per terabyte of storage capacity offering. We provide cost-effective capabilities of FSX for Lustre. I recorded a quick demo so you can see this in action. From the FSX console, I can access the file system I created for this demo. It's a persistent file system with SSD storage and a storage capacity of 100.8 terabytes and a 200 megabytes per second per terabyte throughput capacity per second per terabyte throughput capacity. I also have an AWS parallel cluster with 10 compute nodes. On the parallel cluster master node, I have a write script that I use to write, um, uh, to, to use uh, IOR that will use 10 nodes and, and 16 threads per node to write 80 terabytes of data uh, to the FSX for Lustre file system using IOR. I'm using Slurm and will use SBATS to run this, this write script against all the compute nodes. Going back against all the compute nodes, but I can expand this into its own window. I'm going to expand the graph. And for the sake of time, I'm going to speed up the video. As we can see, my write operations are able to achieve 25 gigabytes per second throughput for a short period of time, followed by a baseline throughput of 20 gigabytes per second as, and as the individual uh, tasks um, complete. The individual uh, tasks now that my write test is completed, I want to go ahead and, and use a similar script to do a read operation. Once again, I'm going to be using Slurm and this sbatch script to execute um, a read operation from 10 nodes using 16 threads per node using IOR again. Once I use sbatch to go ahead and, and execute this script, I'm going to go back to our console to take a look at the performance. Once again, for the sake of time, I'm speeding up the, the video. We see again that we're able to achieve 25 gigabytes per second throughput for a short period of time, followed by the baseline throughput of 20 gigabytes per second. Then as the individual tasks complete, it drops off to zero. It drops off to zero. It can be created as high performing standalone file systems. These file systems are capable of having incremental file system consistent native backups taken, transferred, and durably stored across multiple availability zones. These backups can be used to create new FSX for Lester file systems based on that point in time backup. FSX for Lester can also be used to create file systems that are linked to an S3 bucket or prefix. Hive VFX operates a cloud-based visual effects studio. What makes them interesting to highlight is the fact that in the M&E world, in AWS Elastic Compute Resources and FSX for Lustre makes it easy to align expenses to revenue streams. Toyota Research Institute, or TRI, is one of the many autonomous vehicle companies taking advantage of S3-linked FSX for Lustre file systems. TRI is developing machine learning models for object detection. Machine learning models for object performance storage. In their case, TRI creates short-lived scratch file systems linked to objects stored in S3. When it's time to train or update a model, TRI can spin up an FSX for Lustre file system and seamlessly retrieve data from S3. When the workloads complete, they can just when the workloads complete, they can just easily spin along with their elastic compute resources. I want to dive deep on the S3 integration and show how S3-linked file systems actually work. Here I have an FSX for Lustre file system linked to an S3 bucket, which contains a few S3 objects. Once the S3-linked file system is created, the metadata for each of these objects is automatically created within the FSX for Lustre file system. These S3 objects appear as files within the file system. 
When you create the file system, you can choose to automatically update file and directory listings of the FSX from Lester file system as objects are added or changed in the linked S3 bucket. As your workload creates new files and changes existing files in the file system, you can choose to run the provided data repository task either from the FSX console or from the API and have these new and changed files exported to your linked S3 bucket. Now that you've exported all the new and changed files from FSX for Lustre to your linked S3 bucket, which is acting as your primary data store, you can safely and easily spin down your FSX for Lustre file system along with your compute resources in order to save costs between running workloads. Another benefit of S3 linked file systems is the ability to create FSX for Lustre file systems in different availability zones, all linked to the same S3 bucket. Here, I've created an FSX for Lustre file system in AZA and another file system in AZB. Both are linked to the same S3 bucket. By doing this, I create a single source of truth with S3, but I give compute resources in each availability zone the ability to access the same set of data through high-performance file systems. Before walking through a demo of S3 linked file systems, I want to do a quick recap on what I've presented so far. FSX for Lustre is a fully managed service that provides high-performing Lustre file systems available with different deployment and storage options. An S3 linked file system allows fast file I.O. to S3 objects and improves performance by reducing data access latencies. If your primary data store is an S3, you can easily spin up and spin down your FSX for Lustre file system and your compute resources to process data only when you need to, thus reducing your overall cost of running these workloads. Now I'm going to do a quick walkthrough of a demo I recorded of an S3 linked FSX for Lustre file system. I'm going to use the same FSX for Lustre file system I used in my earlier demo. From the FSX console, I select data repository task. My import pre preferences will update my file and directory listings when objects are added to my bucket. And the bucket name is FSX reInvent 2020. From the S3 console, I can view prefixes and objects in this bucket. And I have a single root prefix called CMIP5. Here I have an SSH session to an EC2 instance that has my file system mounted. If I look at the FSX mount point, I can see that the directory called CMIP5, which matches my S3 bucket prefix. I have a few files on my local laptop that I want to import into my FSX for Lustre file system via the S3 integration. Here from the console, if I click on upload, I can browse out to the directory where my files are. Here my files are located in the AVHRR directory. Here I have a few files I'm going to uh, upload into S3 and ultimately get into my FSX for Lustre file system. Once I click upload, the files will be uploaded into the S3 bucket. And now these objects will be updated into my um, directory listing of my FSX for Lustre file system. As we can already see, my AVHRR directory has already been created. And as I expand out to all the different subdirectories, eventually I'll get to the directory where my data files are located. Now these objects show up as files within my file system. I need to launch a second SSH session to, uh, to this uh, EC2 instance because I want to run NLO to monitor real-time performance um, traffic of this EC2 instance. So I'm going to be working with a, um, a specific object. So now that I have end load running in my top window, I'm going to go back to the S3 console and take a look at the actual object I'm going to be working with. Once I expand out, we're going to be, uh, I'll be finding the, the object that I'll be using in this next demo. This is a 218 megabyte net CDF object that is stored in S3. 
what I'm going to do is I will save this system, the file system path of this file now stored in the FSX or Lustre file system um, as a variable so it's easier to work with. If I run a simple ls against the file, I can see the, uh, the permissions, the user, group, and size of the file, as well as the path of the file in the file system. If I take a look at the HSM state of the file, we can also see that the file is in a state of released, exists in archive, meaning that the data portion of the file is released or not present in the file system, but it exists in the archive, which is the linked S3 bucket. If I run an LFSDF-H against the file system, the middle column here shows the used space of the file system for each object storage target. As we can see, there is no data stored in the file system yet, just the metadata and directory structures. Now, if I run a cat against this uh, file to read it into memory, it will take just a few seconds to do that. It took about 3.3 seconds to complete, and as if you notice in end load, the network traffic only was present at the very end of that operation. If I take a look at the, HS, uh, the uh, HSM state of that file, we see now that it is no longer released, but it does exist in the archive, meaning that now the data portion resides in the file system. If I do another LFSDF-H, I can actually see where this file is, resides, the data portion we can see that it's actually stored on OST60. If I rerun the cat command, it completes in just a few milliseconds. But you notice that there's no network traffic um, in end load, so I didn't actually read it from FSX, I read it from the local cache on the CC2 instance. So first I need to drop the cache on this instance in order to read the file system from FSX. As we can see, it only took a few, a few more milliseconds to read that, and we did see traffic from um, the network, so I, I was able to successfully read this from the FSX um, file system. If I run an HSM release command against this file, I can release the data portion of the file. And if I go back and run an LFSDF-H against the file system, we'll see that the data portion of that file no longer exists in OST60. Now, the metadata still exists in the file system, but the data portion no longer exists in the file system. I no longer need the end load session running, so I'm going to go ahead and close my, uh, my top window. Now I'm going to use small file, which is an open source tool available on GitHub that makes it very easy to generate a lot of small files. In this case, I'm going to generate a, small, uh, a number of, of files, uh, 16 kilobytes in size. I'll copy my small file script and paste it into the window and execute it. It took just a few milliseconds to complete this, and a new directory was created called small file. We can see this if we take a look at the uh, FSX mount point. Well, now what we want to do is now that these new files have been created, we want to export these files to the linked S3 bucket. So from the FSX console, I select export data to repository. I only want to, I only want the new files that I created to be exported. So in the file system path to export text box, I type in the directory that I want to export, which is small file. I click Create Data Repository Task, and the task is now executing. If I scroll to the bottom of the screen, we can take a look at the task and see the state of the task. We see it pending. Eventually, it will change to succeeded, and then we can see uh, after a few minutes, and we can see the number of files um, exported to S3. If we go back to the S3 console, we can also see the files have been imported into S3 and the objects stored using uh, the small file root prefix. FSX for Lustre offers a number of integrations with existing AWS services. I've already talked about the S3 integration, but you can easily mount your file systems to workloads being orchestrated using Amazon EKS AWS Parallel Cluster, and AWS Batch. 
You can also use FSx for Lustre for your machine learning workloads using Amazon SageMaker. Today, Amazon FSx is available in 19 regions and the US West local zone in Los Angeles, and more are coming soon. Thank you for watching this session on Amazon FSx for Lustre. And as a reminder, please complete the survey. Once again, thanks and have a great day.